what if the stone is moving 2 meters per second, but it's moving in two-dimensional motion? Then the velocity vector would look like this. It points in the direction of the velocity. But if the stone is moving at 2 meters per second in that direction, how fast is the stone moving in the x direction, and how fast is it moving in the y direction? Is it moving to the right at 2 meters per second, and up at 2 meters per second? To answer that, we need to find the x and y components of the velocity vector. vx is the velocity component in the x direction, and vy is the component in the y direction. We do the same thing that we did when we learned about displacement vectors and components. The vector v and its two components, vx and vy, form a right triangle. So we can use the trig functions to convert from the magnitude and direction into the x and y components. But we need to be given an angle, theta. In this case, theta is 60 degrees. Sine of theta equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Vy is the opposite side from the angle, and V is the hypotenuse. If we rearrange this equation, Vy equals V times the sine of theta. If we plug in 2 meters per second for V and 60 degrees for theta, we find that Vy is 1.7 meters per second as long as our calculator is set to degrees instead of radians. We can do the same thing for the x component, but using cosine instead of sine, because the x component is adjacent to the angle that we're using. When we do that, we find that vx is 1 meter per second. Remember, we use sine for the component that's opposite from the angle, and cosine for the one that's adjacent to the angle. If we were given the other angle, then Vx would use sine and Vy would use cosine. So this stone is moving at 2 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees. But these components tell us that the stone is moving to the right at 1 meter per second and up at 1.7 meters per second. This might seem confusing if you're not familiar with velocity vectors. Using the right triangle trig functions to find the components of a displacement vector makes sense because they're side lengths of a triangle in 2D space. But the same thing works for velocity vectors and velocity components. If we look at the actual velocity of the stone and we ignore the x and y components, the stone is moving at 2 meters per second in the direction of the velocity vector. But if we imagine the stone is casting a shadow onto the x-axis, and we follow its x-position over time, then the velocity of this shadow is 1 meter per second to the right. Over a period of 1 second, the actual stone moves 2 meters in the direction of its motion, but the shadow moves 1 meter along the x-axis. This is just geometry. The stone moved 1 meter to the right in 1 second, so its velocity to the right is 1 meter per second. If we follow the shadow on the y-axis, we see the shadow is moving upwards at 1.7 meters per second. The stone moves 1.7 meters in the y direction in one second. So a component of the velocity vector is like the velocity of the shadow along one axis. That's how fast the object is moving purely in that direction. Let's do a quick recap by looking at some examples. If the stone is moving directly to the right at 2 meters per second, then the x component of the velocity is also 2 meters per second, and the y velocity is 0. If the stone is moving at 30 degrees, the x velocity is 1.7 meters per second, and the y velocity is 1 meter per second. If the stone moves at 45 degrees, 
then both the x and y velocity components are 1.4 meters per second. If the stone moves at 60 degrees, like before, the x velocity is 1 meter per second, and the y velocity is 1.7 meters per second. And if the stone moves directly upwards, then the y velocity is 2 meters per second, and the x velocity is 0. So far, we've only seen the velocity vector point to the right and upwards. But what if it points down or to the left? In every physics scenario, we need to establish the x and y directions, and which way is positive and negative. In this example, the positive x direction is to the right, and the positive y direction is up. This means that left is the negative x direction, and down is the negative y direction. You can choose different directions depending on the situation, but this is the most common way to set up the coordinate system. Just like we learned with displacement vectors, a component can be positive or negative depending on its direction. If the stone is moving in this direction, Vx is positive and Vy is positive. If the stone is moving in this direction, Vx is positive, but Vy is pointing in the negative y direction, so Vy is negative. If the stone is moving in this direction, then Vx is negative, and Vy is positive. And if the stone is moving in this direction, Vx and Vy are both negative. Remember that we can draw the components in different places, so do what makes the most sense to you. You might have noticed that the components are switching between positive and negative, but the 2 meters per second didn't change. A vector's magnitude is always positive. 2 meters per second is the speed of the stone, which is the magnitude of the velocity. No matter which way the stone is moving, we would still say its speed, or the magnitude, is positive 2 meters per second. And again, keep in mind that the components are positive or negative based on the direction that they're pointing, not on the position of the object. The positive and negative directions are always the same no matter where the object is. It's like using compass directions. If a component is pointing to the right, it's pointing in the east direction, which is positive. If the component is pointing to the left, it's pointing in the west direction, which is negative. As a visual example, here's a curling stone moving in a circle. Its speed is constant, so the velocity vector is always the same length. But watch how the x and y velocity components change depending on which direction the stone is moving at any moment in time. 